Okay, welcome to the Cell Organelles Targeted Tutoring. Uh, you guys are just going to need a white sheet of paper and something to write with and maybe something to color with. And we'll get started. Okay, uh, we'll start with the animal cells. Uh, just going over the main organelles that we find in an animal cell. So go ahead and draw yourself an animal cell. Oop, that's not the right thing I wanted to do. I need a pen. What is my pen color? I do not want red. Okay. So animal cells are kind of roundish, especially compared to plant cells. And do you guys remember what this outer border of the cell is called? Cell wall? Cell wall? Nope. Cell walls are not in animal cells. It does start with the word cell, though. Cell membrane. Wonderful. And then usually the most noticeable thing in an animal cell is going to be it's what? The nucleus. Do you guys remember what the job of the nucleus is? What does it do? It's like the director. So it directs all the cell's activities. All right. Animal cells also have these little bean-shaped things with those little squiggly lines in them. Do you remember what those are called? Chloroplasts are only found in plant cells. Good, mitochondria. So you can always tell uh, the drawing is supposed to be a mitochondria because sort of just bean shaped and then it has those little squiggly lines in there. Mitochondria. Do you guys remember what the job of the mitochondria is to do? Nope. Okay, so the mitochondria is sometimes referred to as the mighty mitochondria. because their job is to break down food to release energy that the cell can use. It's kind of like the digestive system of the cell. So it's gonna break down food for energy. So you're going to see more mitochondria in cells that use a lot of energy. So, for instance, muscle cells are going to have a large number of mitochondria because your muscle cells need a lot of energy to move around. 
And then just what is the goopy filling in the cell call? Do you remember? Golgi, nope, it's like the goopy stuff that holds all the organelles in place. Starts with a C. Cytoplasm. Cytoplasm is the jelly filling of the cells. So it has a lot of uh, amino acids floating around in there to help build proteins, but it's basically just that gel filling. And all the organelles are just sort of swimming around in that filling. So those are the big four main organelles of animal cells. If you guys just can focus on remembering those four, that would probably be adequate. So the nucleus, go ahead and write down that their DNA is in the nucleus of a eukaryotic cell. DNA of a prokaryotic cell is sort of just floating around in the cytoplasm. So all four of these organelles are also found in plant cells, but plant cells have other organelles that animal cells do not. So that's what we'll talk about next. Do you guys have any questions on these? Y'all can add a little note here for cell membrane. Cell membrane controls what enters and exits the cell. That is really hard to read. <laughs> so your cell membrane is going to control what enters and exits. All right, we're gonna move on to plant cells. We'll stay blue, why not? Um, plant cells are always drawn a little bit on the boxier side. So this is a good way to determine if you're looking at a plant or an animal cell in a diagram. Um, Plant cells are always just drawn with a little bit more of a rectangular shape to them. And they also have a cell wall outside of the cell membrane. So go ahead and draw a cell membrane inside of that cell wall. Whoa. So the function of the cell wall is different from the cell membrane because the cell wall is more um, geared towards providing structure. And support. Whereas the cell membrane was mostly in charge of what? 
Come on, we just talked about it. What does the cell membrane do? Good. And so the cell membrane is going to control what enters and exits the cell. All right, so plant cells have all the other organelles we just talked about. We're not going to rewrite all that because it's just not really any point to it. So usually in a plant cell, the nucleus is sort of uh, squished over toward the edge. Plant cells will also have mitochondria that break down the sugars to release energy that the cell can use. Plant cells also have chloroplasts, which are usually drawn larger than mitochondria. And chloroplasts have those like little, they look like little stacks of green pancakes in them. So anytime you see chloroplasts, if you're looking at them in color, they would usually be drawn green because they are filled with chlorophyll, which is a green pigment. And you know, I don't think they're bigger than in the nucleus, though. I think that's a little thicker. And then they usually have what looks like little stacks of pancakes in them. So, the job of the chloroplast, does anybody remember what that was? No? So this is where photosynthesis takes place, and we haven't learned photosynthesis this year, so what we can write for this is this is where light energy is converted to chemical energy. And it's important for you guys to know that all of our food that we eat is a form of chemical energy. So basically, chloroplasts are where plants turn light into food, which is kind of a crazy miracle if you think about it. Whoa. All right, that should say food, but it doesn't look like that. So, so chloroplasts um, are where. Uh, Light energy, usually from the sun, is converted to chemical energy that the plant can use to power its growth and reproduction and movement. Um, it's also where people and other consumers get their energy. We can't just go sit in the sun and have the sun beat on us and create energy from that. So we have to eat energy. Uh, and then plant cells will also have a very large and obvious vacuole. Vacuoles are like the little storage centers in the cells. Animal cells have vacuoles too, but they're usually a lot smaller and more insignificant. Are you guys pretty aware of what vacuoles are after we talked about turker pressure and all of that? Yeah, so the vacuole is filled with water, the turker pressure pushes out 
on the cell. And if all the cells look like that, then the plant's going to stand up and look really healthy. And as the water is used up or leaves the cell, the turgor pressure decreases and then those cells will start sort of collapsing in on each other and the plant will look wilted. So the vacuole is a storage unit. And in plant cells, it stores mostly water. So the cell wall and the chloroplast and that large vacuole are going to be found only in plant cells. All right, y'all ready? And then we'll talk about the last set of organelles here. They're not, I don't know, they're just not super duper important, but we'll do blue again. I like blue. Uh, so the other organelles that aren't really listed in our teaks, but we teach them anyway because we like to give you guys a lot of information. Um, so there's the cell membrane. We already got that one, the nucleus. So usually surrounding a nucleus is going to be the endoplasmic reticulum. which we just call ER because endoplasmic reticulum is a mouthful. So there's two types of ER. There's rough ER, and that just means it's dotted with ribosomes, which are super teeny tiny little organelles. I don't even think they have a membrane, but don't quote me on that. So the ER, you would think of that as like, what did we compare that to when we did the school comparison? Do you guys remember? No? The cafeteria? Okay, so we're just going to put that the ER transports materials in the cell. Kind of like the the roadways. And then there's another organelle called the Golgi bodies. And they kind of look like these little flat pancakes with like balls on the end of them, for lack of a better term. It's a lovely drawing. Uh, 
And then those balls break off and then they're called vesicles. And what the Golgi's do <coughs> is for the most part they package or repackage proteins. So they'll receive proteins and then they'll sort of bend them all around into different shapes and then they send them out to different places. So they can send them to another location in the cell or they can send them out of the cell. So package proteins and I'll put distribute them. These little tiny dots are called ribosomes. They're pretty much always just drawn as tiny little dots. Um, and they can be free floating in the cytoplasm or they can be stuck onto the rough ER. And ribosomes make proteins. That's what they do. They make proteins. And then the last one we'll talk about on here is a lysosome. And lysosomes are kind of like the garbage collectors of the cell. They have digestive enzymes inside of them and they go around and find uh, things that are no longer needed or useful and they just sort of gulp them up and break them down. So lysosomes break down wastes in the cell. All right, uh, that's pretty much all I have for y'all. At this point, it's just going to be a matter of memorizing this stuff, memorizing what those things look like, memorizing what they do. Um, you can work on making a comparison, like you can compare your cell to the school like we did in class or to a city or to something else that you're familiar with so that you can start relating um, this new knowledge to some existing knowledge that you might have that will help you to remember it. Um, but yeah, unfortunately for a lot of it it's just going to be um, memorizing which is not fun. Alright, that's all I got. <laughs>